Today we're going to take a look at the TPC-124XB AIS-2. This is a thermal network mini hybrid bullet camera. It also does come in a turret or an eyeball camera. You can get these cameras in a 3.5mm, 7mm and a 10mm lens. This camera is a dual image fusion camera which means it has a visible and a thermal channel so you can see both visual and thermal imaging at the same time. It's a vanadium oxide uncooled focal plane detector for the thermal and a 4 megapixel for the visual. It does have AI functions which include heat detection, trip wire, smoking detection and call detection. It is IP67 rated and can be powered by a 12 volt DC and PoE. It does have one IR and one white light on the camera and also has a speaker. With the speaker this camera can set off an alarm. When we bring up our web browser we'll log into the camera. We'll put our credentials in and our password and click log in. You can see on our main page it has a visual camera on the left and our thermal camera on the right. You can select the mainstream or substream for each camera. And down at the bottom there's several different things. You can show the AI rule if you have it set up. You also can do one channel at a time. You can have a small thermal camera at the bottom right window and you can move it around as needed. You can have them stacked or by default side by side. You also in the top toolbar you have a markup tool. You can click on the markup tool and draw on the screen. Click the erase. You can set your alarm off on alarm 1 and alarm 2 and you can local record. You also do have a talk microphone and if you have a microphone hooked up to your PC you can speak through the camera. You do have magnifying glass for digital zoom. You also have an image adjust where you can set your image settings. We'll go to a home page. We're not going to spend a lot of time as most of these modules are the same as all the other cameras. We'll take a look at the AI. The AI you're allowed to set an IVS rule. Camera view 1 which is the visual camera. You can set an IVS rule. You can set up an alarm if you want call detection. Somebody using their cell phone. On cam 2 you have IVS rules and smoking detection. And you can only select one AI for each channel. Let's take a look at the Smart Thermal and show you a couple AI configs that they have. You can have a cold hot spot. You can see it detects the coldest and the highest temperature. We can turn this on and edit and you can change your colors if needed and you can select if you just want cold spots or hot spots and the indicator will show you the contrast difference. You can see the red and blue. We'll leave that on so when we go to our live view we'll be able to see those. You can see on our thermal side we have the hottest and coldest areas detected. We'll go back to our AI and see what else is in there. It says when heat is detected in the target area the location is displayed on the thermal image and an alarm is triggered. You can set it for audio, recording, email and others so you can be alerted via message and you'll set that up in this area. You can deselect the image just like you were setting up motion detection and have just certain areas that you want to be alerted. Under your event linkage, you can send an email, you can set your out alarm port, you can do an audio linkage and a warning light. So this is where you can set the heat detection says we have an anti-disturbance and high response. The anti-disturbance detects suspected heat several times. The accuracy is higher but the detection speed is lower. The high response detects heat quickly but the detection accuracy is lower. We'll go back to Smart Thermal. You can do a picture-in-picture -picture, which is an overlay on top. 
we'll go in and set up an IVS rule and we'll first set it up on the visual image. I have a intrusion already set. We can do the target filter, human or motor vehicles, and we can have it cross or appear. When we go back to our smart plan and we set another IVS on camera two, what I have found that when we go into the IVS setup and select our camera two, the camera will default to white hot. It does suggest that you use this mode and it also lets you know that cameras will be split. We'll go back to our home page and go to the camera module and we'll take a look at our settings. When we switch over the thermal camera or channel two, we can see that we're in a customized scene. You also can select the scene type. You also can change the profile to day, night in general and you have some basic settings. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, etc. It does have a digital zoom. You can see the different color palettes and I'll quickly show you the palette sample in complete darkness. Also note the fusion mode at the bottom. You can select a warm color or a solid color. You'll see that they do not change because I have the IVS rule set up on both cameras. If I go back to the IVS rule and deselect it on either camera. Now when I come back to the camera, I can select my fusion mode. I have found that it defaults to white hot if both IVS rules are enabled. And it does give you a warning that the lenses will be split if both IVS's rules are set up. You also can adjust the fusion overlay. When you're in a fusion mode, it puts the visual picture on top of the thermal. And if it's offset, you can adjust it with these arrow buttons. And again, you can set a time plan by moving the sliders for your day night and press apply under our encode mode you can see you have channel 1 and channel 2 you can set your settings up accordingly under your overlay you can mask you can name the camera if you wanted the time title the day etc the voltage info I did turn on but I have no visual on where the voltage is also has a region of interest on each camera we have audio you'd have to set up a microphone for the line in and then our alarm tone
If we go back to our home, we can see our modules. We'll take a look at the events. Under the events is where you can set up your video detection. With the area, you can see what's highlighted is what is the video detection area is for this zone. I can switch zones. I can set the threshold for each zone and the sensitivity. I can do the same for channel 2 or the thermal camera. Press apply. If you're going to use an SD card, you'd go into your record mode and set your time plan and your storage configuration. Up under your settings tool, you can get into the network settings to adjust your IP address if you want it DHCP or static. In this chapter, we're going to take a look how to use the thermal camera to call up a PTZ as a trigger cam. My first step is to take my PTZ and set a preset. This is where I'm going to want the PTZ to go when a thermal cam detects something. When I choose my preset, I'll add it to my PTZ camera, and in this case, I'll call it Preset 4. If I want to have the PTZ camera auto-track, I need to go to that preset and set IVS rules so it will track. In this case, I'll turn on the IVS, I'll set a tripwire for the preset that I just made, which is number 4. I'll add the rule, and I'll select tripwire. You could select intrusion rule if you prefer. I'll draw my tripwire where I want the object to be auto tracked. Now that I have configured the preset and set up an IVS rule in that preset for the auto tracking, I can go to the live view and see the rule that I set up. I have already set one up for preset 7. Now we'll go to our NVR under the AI module. You'll see I'll select my camera, number 13 is my thermal, and the IVS rule will be there. You could add a new IVS rule if you'd like. In this sample, I'm going to take my preset number 7 that I already had set up and move the IVS rule as needed. Once I adjusted where I want the IVS rule, I'll press OK. I'll make sure that it's enabled. And then I'll press the trigger. Under the trigger is where you can set the PTZ linkage and press settings. I know that my channel 1 is my PTZ camera and preset 7 is the IVS that we're working with. We'll come back and work with the preset number 4 that we set up in the camera earlier. We'll press OK and then apply. Now I'll go out and set off the IVS tripwire rule and see if the PTZ camera will turn to that preset position and auto track. You can see on the left the visual is completely dark and the thermal cam is on the right with the IVS tripwire rules that are visible. You can see when I set off the tripwire the PTZ camera will turn to the preset that we have selected which was number 7. As I'm out there walking around I'm actually going to be tripping the IVS rules that we set up in the preset 7 so it will begin auto tracking. You'll see I'll go back and set the tripwires again and it will disengage the auto tracking and call it back to the preset like it did the first time. Here's another sample of me setting off the tripwires then the PTZ moves to that position and starts auto tracking. You'll see the cat that comes up behind me and sets off the tripwire again and breaks the PTZ auto track and calls it back to the preset. We'll now take a look at the preset 4 that we set up earlier in the camera. I have changed the thermal camera's trigger setting and selected the PTZ linkage to preset 4. You can see when I break the thermal camera's IVS, the PTZ camera goes to preset 4 and it will lock on to me after I set off the PTZ IVS and will start to auto track. This is very useful as the thermal camera can see at far distance.
You can have multiple trigger points on a camera by setting up different IVS rules. All the IVS triggering is done through the NVR through the PTZ linkage. You are able to set off a trigger cam through the NVR with motion detection under the alarm module under the video detection section. You'll do the same thing by selecting the PTZ linkage after you set up the motion detection. Keep in mind the motion detection is going to be very sensitive so it may cause a lot of false alarms. If you have an AI NVR you can set smart motion detection and filter out for just humans or vehicles and do the same thing with less false alarms. If you notice in this clip the motion detection is activated prior to the IVS. When I come up to the motion detection area it sets off the PTZ to the preset and then you'll see I eventually trip the trip wire and will cause the camera to go back to the preset. Thanks for watching our overview on the TPC124XB AIS2 Mini Hybrid Thermal Camera.